Bruce, and Bruce was really ahead of his time. And I worked out with Bruce, he and I worked out for three years, uh, when that's when I held the world title, and well, he respected me because mm -hmm. of my ability as a world champion at the time. In a surprising revelation that has rocked both the martial arts and film industries, Chuck Norris has finally shed light on the mysterious deaths of Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee. This revelation promises to uncover the truth behind these tragic events, sending shockwaves through the entertainment world. What exactly did Chuck Norris disclose about Bruce Lee's passing? Were they set up? Join us as we reveal the surprising revelations made by Chuck Norris about the circumstances surrounding Bruce Lee's death. Number 1. The Meeting of Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris During a talk show, Chuck Norris shared a story about meeting Bruce Lee. He said, Bruce Lee, sitting down, Bruce Lee goes like this here. So I go down there and get off. You know, we start talking. And he says, don't you live in L.A.? I say, yes. He says, I do too, so why don't we start training together? And so, you know, we trained together for two years. And he got, as you could tell, he got good at it. Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris are two of the most famous martial artists and action stars ever. But how did they meet and become friends? And how did they end up fighting each other in one of the most famous scenes in movie history? It all started when Chuck Norris met Bruce Lee on a talk show. Bruce invited Chuck to train with him in Los Angeles, where they both lived. They trained together for two years, and Bruce became incredibly skilled. This led to their epic fight scene in the movie Way of the Dragon, where they faced off in a showdown that is still talked about today. Their friendship and training together led to an iconic moment in cinema, showing that even the greatest stars can come together and create magic on the screen. The story of Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris begins in the late 1960s, when both were rising stars in martial arts and movies. Bruce Lee had become famous in Hong Kong with his movies The Big Boss and Fist of Fury, and he wanted to expand his reach. Chuck Norris, on the other hand, was a karate world champion, winning many tournaments in the U.S. and abroad. And of all of Lee's martial arts techniques, one stood out as his favorite. It was his unmistakable high-flying kicks. Number 2. The Legendary High-Kicking Techniques Bruce Lee, always eager to learn from others, picked up valuable tips from Chuck Norris, who encouraged him to practice high-kicking techniques. This training helped Bruce improve his skills even further. Their friendship grew as they trained together, and they became close friends. They would often spar and exchange ideas about martial arts. Bruce Lee admired Chuck Norris's strength and skill, while Chuck Norris was inspired by Bruce Lee's speed and agility. Their training together had a big impact on both of their careers. Bruce Lee's skills and fame continued to grow, leading to his eventual success in Hollywood. Chuck Norris also became a martial arts icon and a successful actor, thanks in part to his training with Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee used to think that martial artists shouldn't kick above the waist, but Chuck Norris taught him the value of being able to kick anywhere, especially if an opponent's head is exposed. Lee saw Norris was right, and after just six months of training, Lee's high kicks became as good as Norris's, but Lee was just as good with his leg as he was with his fist. He was probably even better with the latter. Number 3. Jeet Kune Do, The Intercepting Fist Chuck Norris was also amazed by Bruce Lee's speed, power, and the lessons he learned from Lee's unique style of martial arts called Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do, which means the way of the intercepting fist, was created by Lee himself. It's not a rigid set of techniques, but a flexible and adaptable way of fighting and living. Jeet Kune Do is all about being simple, direct, and free, aiming to go beyond the limits of traditional martial arts. One of the key ideas in Jeet Kune Do is interception, which means attacking your opponent's attack or intention before it can reach you. This needs a high level of awareness, speed, timing, and the ability to adjust to any situation. Practitioners of Jeet Kune Do trained to intercept using punches, kicks, elbows, knees, traps, locks, and throws. Jeet Kune Do is not just about fighting, it's a way of life. It encourages people to be open-minded, flexible, and creative, and to constantly seek self-improvement. Bruce Lee famously said, Research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is essentially your own. Chuck Norris was also inspired by Bruce Lee's dedication and passion for martial arts. They became very close friends, and their friendship was based on mutual respect and admiration for each other's skills and philosophies. So, it was only a matter of time before the duo collaborated in what had become some of the most iconic martial arts movies ever. 
Number 4. Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris's Movie Collaboration Their friendship blossomed into a collaboration in 1972. Bruce invited Chuck Norris to star in his third movie, Way of the Dragon, which Bruce himself wrote and directed. This movie was a big deal because it was Bruce Lee's only complete directorial film released while he was still alive. Way of the Dragon is a martial arts action comedy set in Hong Kong. Bruce Lee plays the lead role of Tang Lang, a talented martial artist. Tang travels to Rome to help his friends, Chun Ching and her uncle Wang, who are having trouble with a mean crime boss. The gangster wants to take over their restaurant, and they need Tang's kung fu skills to protect it. Alongside Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, the movie stars Nora Miao, Robert Wall, and Wei Ping. As Tang Lang, Bruce Lee fights off the bad guys to save the restaurant and help his friends. But it's not just about fighting. Tang also explores the city of Rome and learns about its culture. The climax of the movie is a famous showdown between Tang and the crime boss's hired assassin Colt, played by Norris. This epic fight takes place in the Colosseum, adding to the drama and excitement of the scene. Way of the Dragon was not just a hit, it was a blockbuster. It made over $130 million worldwide, which was amazing considering it was made on a budget of only $130,000. This means it earned a thousand times more than it cost to make. In Hong Kong, it was the most successful film of 1972 and held the record for the highest earnings ever in Hong Kong at that time. When it was released in the United States in 1974, it was titled Return of the Dragon and became the first Hong Kong film to top the U.S. box office. The movie is famous for its incredible fight scenes, like the one with the nunchakus, the fight in the alley, and the final battle with Norris. These scenes are so well done and exciting that they are still talked about today as some of the best fight scenes in movie history. Way of the Dragon also reflects Bruce Lee's philosophy of martial arts. He believed in being adaptable, creative, and expressing yourself through your fighting style. These ideas are woven throughout the movie, showing not just Bruce Lee's skills as a fighter, but also his beliefs about martial arts and life. The ultimate showdown between Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris happened in the ancient Colosseum and is considered one of the greatest fight scenes ever. In this epic battle, Bruce Lee showcases his incredible speed and agility, while Chuck Norris demonstrates his strength and endurance. What makes this fight scene stand out is its realism. Bruce and Chuck hit each other with full force, adding to the intensity of the scene. What's also remarkable is the respect shown between the two fighters. Before and after the fight, Bruce and Chuck bow to each other, showing honor and sportsmanship. The fight concludes with Bruce Lee emerging victorious, but before he does, he gives Chuck Norris a final sign of respect. Bruce covers Chuck's body with his jacket, a gesture of honor and respect for his worthy opponent. This fight scene is not just about the physical battle, but also about the values of respect, honor, and sportsmanship. It teaches us that even during competition, it's important to show respect for our opponents and to acknowledge their skills and efforts. This scene has become legendary in martial arts cinema, inspiring audiences with its powerful message and incredible action. The bond between the duo grew both on set and in real life. Do and Bruce Lee died rather unexpectedly, Norris had a different viewpoint to the shocking incident. Number 5. Chuck Norris's Theory About Bruce Lee's Death Chuck Norris once shared his thoughts on Bruce Lee's death at a San Diego Comic-Con event. He knew Bruce Lee well and was aware of his health issues and habits. Norris mentioned that Bruce Lee had a habit of lifting heavy weights, which eventually led to a serious back injury. In 1968, while doing a weightlifting exercise called Good Mornings, Bruce Lee ruptured a disc in his spine. This injury caused him a lot of pain and limited his movement. Bruce Lee had to undergo surgery and take medication to recover from this injury. The doctor even mentioned that he wasn't sure if Bruce Lee would be able to walk again. Despite the doctor's advice to rest and allow his body to heal properly, Bruce Lee was very stubborn and impatient. He continued to train rigorously, pushing his body to its limits. Another challenge Bruce Lee faced was his fast metabolism. He always tried to gain weight and muscle, which led him to consume a lot of protein and supplements like ginseng and royal jelly to boost his energy and performance. Bruce Lee also drank a large amount of water, sometimes up to 10 liters a day, to help flush out toxins from his body. Chuck Norris shared that Bruce Lee had a strong desire for perfection and wanted to excel in everything he did. When Bruce was in Hong Kong preparing for his next movie, he worked with an actress named Betty Ting Pei, who was going to be his co-star. One day, 
Bruce got a terrible headache while working with Betty. Concerned for him, Betty gave him some antibiotics to help with the pain. However, Bruce had already taken medication for his back pain, and when combined with the antibiotics and other supplements he was taking, it caused a reaction in his body. This reaction led to swelling in his brain, a condition known as cerebral edema, where the brain becomes swollen due to an increase in fluid. On the night of his death, Bruce Lee was in Hong Kong, getting ready for his upcoming movie, Game of Death. He asked Betty Ting Pei for a painkiller to relieve his severe headache. Unfortunately, the painkiller contained aspirin, which Bruce was allergic to. He didn't know the pill contained aspirin, and when he took it, it triggered a dangerous reaction in his body. Bruce went to rest on Betty's bed, hoping to find relief from his headache. Tragically, he never woke up again. This unexpected turn of events shocked Bruce's family, friends, and fans around the world. Cerebral edema is a serious condition where fluid builds up in the brain, causing increased pressure inside the skull. This pressure can harm brain cells and reduce blood flow and oxygen to the brain. It's very dangerous and needs urgent medical attention. There are several reasons why cerebral edema might happen, like a bad head injury, a stroke, an infection, a tumor, diabetes, going to high altitudes, or taking too many drugs. Depending on what caused it and how bad it is, cerebral edema can show different signs. Some common ones are headaches, feeling dizzy, throwing up, feeling weak, getting confused, having trouble seeing, having seizures, or even passing out. Doctors can find out if someone has cerebral edema by doing a checkup and some tests, like a CT scan, an MRI, or blood tests. Treatment changes depending on what caused the problem and how much pressure there is inside the skull. They might use medicines, do surgery, or give extra oxygen to help fix it. The main aim of treatment is to get blood flowing and oxygen back to the brain and to make the swelling go down. Cerebral edema can lead to some big problems if it's not treated quickly. It could cause lasting damage to the brain, make someone go into a coma, or even cause death. Sadly, some well-known people have passed away from cerebral edema. Alan Ladd, a famous Hollywood actor known for movies like Shane and The Great Gatsby, died in 1964 when he was 50 years old. His death was caused by an overdose of alcohol and sedatives, which led to cerebral edema and respiratory failure. Another person who died from cerebral edema was Nicolette Larson, a singer-songwriter who had a hit with the song L of Love. She passed away in 1997 at the age of 45. Her cerebral edema was caused by liver failure. After Bruce Lee's sudden death, Chuck Norris spoke fondly of him in interviews and writings. He called Bruce Lee a phenomenon and a genius who changed martial arts and movies forever. Chuck Norris also mentioned that Bruce Lee was a humble and kind person who taught him many valuable lessons and inspired him to become better. Chuck Norris expressed how much he missed Bruce Lee and wished he could have seen him grow older and achieve even more. He maintained a close relationship with Bruce Lee's family, especially with his son, Brandon Lee. Number 6. Norris and Brandon Lee's Relationship Throughout the years, Brandon Lee was just eight years old when his father, Bruce Lee, passed away. Despite his young age, Brandon inherited his father's love for martial arts and acting. He decided to follow in his father's footsteps and pursued a career in acting. Some of his notable movies include Showdown in Little Tokyo, Rapid Fire, and The Crow. Chuck Norris, who was a close friend and mentor to Brandon, played a significant role in his life. He supported Brandon in both his professional and personal endeavors. Norris helped Brandon with his martial arts training and acting career. He also stood by Brandon during tough times when he faced challenges like racism, media scrutiny, and the weight of family expectations. Norris often referred to Brandon as a son, expressing immense pride in his achievements. Unfortunately, Brandon's life was cut short tragically in 1993, when he was just 28 years old. While filming The Crow, Brandon was involved in a fatal accident on set. He was accidentally shot by a prop gun that was supposed to fire blanks, but had a live round in it. Despite being rushed to the hospital, Brandon succumbed to his injuries. Brandon Lee's death was incredibly sad for his family, friends, and fans. Everyone was deeply saddened by the loss of such a talented and kind-hearted person. Chuck Norris, who was a close friend of the Lee family, was particularly affected by Brandon's passing. He attended Brandon's funeral to say goodbye and show his respects. Chuck Norris described Brandon as a fantastic person and an amazing actor who had a promising future ahead of him. Losing Brandon felt like losing a son to Chuck. He cherished his relationship with Brandon and hoped that Brandon and his father, Bruce Lee, were together in heaven. 
Brandon's death left a void in the hearts of many. He was loved and admired by so many people, and his passing was a great loss to the world of entertainment. But it wasn't just Norris who had other ideas about the possible cause of Bruce Lee's death. Number 7. Matthew Polly's Controversial Theory Chuck Norris's explanation for Bruce Lee's death has been questioned by many. However, a lot of what Norris says agrees with the findings of Lee's biographer, Matthew Polly. In his book, Bruce Lee, A Life, Polly suggests a different theory. He argues that Bruce Lee died from heat stroke, a condition where the body gets too hot and can't cool down properly. Heat stroke can cause organ failure, brain damage, and even death. Polly's theory is based on several facts he uncovered during his research on Lee's life and death. He mentions that Bruce Lee had surgery to remove sweat glands from his armpits because he didn't like how they looked on screen. This made it harder for his body to cool down by sweating, especially in the hot and humid weather of Hong Kong. Sweat glands are important for keeping the body's temperature normal, so removing them increased Bruce Lee's risk of getting heat-related illnesses. Polly also notes that Bruce Lee had a history of heat stroke. About 10 weeks before he died, Bruce Lee collapsed and had convulsions while working on his film, Enter the Dragon, in a hot, stuffy room. He was taken to the hospital and diagnosed with cerebral edema. The doctors treated him with a drug to reduce brain swelling, and he got better. However, Polly suggests that Bruce Lee's collapse was caused by heat stroke, which can also lead to cerebral edema. He believes the doctors might have missed this diagnosis. Dr. Lisa Leon, an expert cited by Polly, explains that people who have had one heat stroke are more likely to have another. She also says that patients can have problems with multiple organs during recovery, which increases the risk of long-term damage or death. Matthew Polly reveals that Bruce Lee died on one of the hottest days in July 1973, when the temperature soared to 93 degree F. Bruce was at his mistress Betty Ting's apartment when he started feeling unwell. He complained of a headache and took a tablet called Equagesic, which contained aspirin and a tranquilizer. Seeking relief, Bruce laid down on Betty's bed, which was covered with a thick blanket. Polly suggests that the combination of the drug, the thick blanket, and the intense heat created a dangerous situation that led to Bruce's fatal heat stroke. He also believes that the drug might have hidden the signs of heat stroke, like feeling thirsty, tired, or confused, which could have prevented Bruce from realizing he was in danger and seeking help. This theory is supported by the autopsy report which showed no signs of an allergic reaction or drug overdose in Bruce's body. His blood tests revealed normal levels of aspirin and the tranquilizer. However, his brain was swollen by 133%, indicating cerebral edema, a condition where the brain swells due to various reasons, including heat stroke. Dr. Donald Langford, who examined Bruce's body, agreed with Polly's theory, saying that heat stroke was a likely cause of Bruce Lee's death. But besides this expert opinion, there were many other interesting and rather shocking theories. Number 8. The Intriguing Theories of Triads One of the most talked about theories surrounding Bruce Lee's death involves the Triads, a Chinese organized crime group. The theory suggests that Bruce Lee may have angered the Triads during his time in Hong Kong, leading to his demise. One possible reason for this animosity is Bruce Lee's unconventional approach to martial arts in his films. He was known for introducing new techniques and challenging the traditional views held by some martial arts masters in Hong Kong. The triads who had connections to these traditional schools may have seen Bruce Lee's work as a threat to their influence over the martial arts community. They may have also viewed his films as disrespectful to their culture. As a result, the theory goes, the triads may have decided to eliminate Bruce Lee to protect their interests. While this theory is intriguing, no concrete evidence supports it. The circumstances surrounding Bruce Lee's death remain a mystery, and many questions remain unanswered. Another possible reason behind Bruce Lee's death involves the triads wanting money from him. Bruce was a successful actor and producer, making him wealthy. The triads, known for demanding money from the film industry in Hong Kong, may have asked Bruce for a share of his earnings, which he refused. Additionally, Bruce had plans to expand his career to Hollywood and other international markets, which would have reduced the triads' power over him. This refusal in his plans may have made the triads view Bruce as a rival who needed to be taught a lesson or removed. Another theory suggests that the triads had a personal grudge against Bruce. Bruce was known for his confidence and outspoken nature, which might have led him to clash with some members of the triads. It's possible that Bruce offended or challenged them in some way 
leading to a desire for revenge. In addition, Bruce's relationship with actress Betty Ting Pei, who was with him on the day he died, may have sparked jealousy or resentment among the triads. If Bruce was involved with women connected to the triads, it could have angered some members who wanted to harm him or his reputation. These personal conflicts could have played a role in Bruce Lee's untimely death. According to the triad theory, the triads had various ways to kill Bruce Lee, such as poisoning, shooting, stabbing, or strangling him. However, the most likely method they used was a technique called Dim Mac, also known as the Death Touch. This technique involves striking specific pressure points on the body that can cause internal damage or death. The triads might have hired or pressured a martial arts expert, like a rival or former student of Bruce Lee, to perform the Dim Mac on him. This could have been done either directly or indirectly. The Dim Mac could have caused Bruce Lee's brain to swell or stopped his heart or lungs, leading to his death. There are some reasons to believe this theory. Bruce Lee had received several death threats from the triads and had faced attempts to sabotage his film projects. Additionally, he had experienced a previous episode of Cerebral Edema, which might have been a failed Dim Mac attempt by the triads. On the day he died, Bruce complained of headaches and dizziness, symptoms that could be related to Dim Mac effects. Bruce Lee had also visited a restaurant owned by the triads on the day of his death, where he might have been poisoned or attacked. Furthermore, he died in the apartment of Betty Ting Pei, who was rumored to be connected to the triads. She may have lured or drugged Bruce Lee for the triads. There were signs on Bruce Lee's body that suggested he had been bruised or had needle marks. These marks might have been clues indicating that the triads used the Dim Mac technique on him or were trying to hide their actions. After Bruce Lee's death, several suspicious and tragic incidents occurred. For example, his son Brandon Lee was shot on the set of a movie in 1993. Additionally, some of Bruce's friends and associates either disappeared or were killed. It's possible that these people knew information about the triads or were trying to reveal their involvement in Bruce Lee's death. Don't you think? Number 9. A Mysterious Family Curse Theory Some people believe that Bruce Lee and his family were cursed, a mysterious and tragic legacy that has affected them for generations. According to this belief, an evil spirit targets the male members of the Lee family, leading to their early and often violent deaths. This curse is said to have claimed the lives of several of Bruce Lee's relatives, including his son Brandon, who died in a tragic accident while filming The Crow. The origin of this curse is rooted in Chinese folklore and superstition. It is said to have started with Li Yuan, a famous general from the Tang Dynasty, known for his loyalty and bravery. Legend has it that a powerful sorcerer, whom Li Yuan had crossed, placed a curse on him and his descendants, ensuring they would never live past the age of 33. Another version of the story connects the curse to Li S, a general from the Song Dynasty, who betrayed his emperor and joined the Mongols. As punishment, the emperor's court wizard cursed Li S and his offspring, condemning them to die by fire or metal. While these stories may not be based on factual events, they have influenced the beliefs and behaviors of the Li family for centuries. The idea of a curse haunting the family has become a part of their history and culture, shaping how they view their past and future. Bruce Lee's parents, Li Hoi Chuan and Grace Ho, were deeply spiritual and superstitious, especially after Bruce's older brother died before Bruce was born. The cause of his brother's death remains a mystery, leading some to speculate it was due to a curse. To protect Bruce from any evil spirits, his parents gave him a female nickname, Little Phoenix. They dressed him in girl's clothes and even pierced his ears, hoping to fool the spirits into thinking he was a girl. They also avoided calling him by his real name, Junfan, which means return in Chinese, fearing it might attract the evil spirit to take him away. Bruce Lee's parents strongly believed in fate, or Ming, which suggests that one's life is predetermined by the heavens. They consulted fortune tellers and astrologers who predicted that Bruce had a strong and auspicious destiny, but also a short and perilous one. They warned Bruce's parents that he would encounter many challenges and enemies in his life and advised them to take care of his health and safety. Despite their efforts to protect him from the curse and fate, Bruce Lee's parents couldn't prevent him from pursuing his dreams. Bruce was a rebellious and adventurous child who adored martial arts movies and challenges. At the age of 18, he moved to the United States, where he studied, taught, and created his own martial arts style called Jeet Kune Do. He also pursued a career in Hollywood, 
where he faced discrimination and prejudice, but also shattered barriers and stereotypes. He became a star, a hero, and a legend. But along the way, he also made enemies, rivals, and critics. Some people believe that Bruce Lee's death was not an accident, but a result of the Lee family curse. They point out that he passed away at the same age as his grandfather, who also died of a brain edema. They also note that he died in the year and hour of the dragon, which was his zodiac sign. Additionally, Bruce had a premonition of his death in a dream, which he shared with his wife, Linda Lee. People claim that Bruce Lee was haunted by a demon, which he saw in his mirrors and battled in his films like Enter the Dragon and Game of Death. The Lee family curse theory gained more attention after the tragic death of Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee. Brandon was also killed in a freak accident while filming The Crow. Some believe that Brandon Lee's death was also a result of the Lee family curse, noting that he died while portraying a character who was shot, similar to how Bruce Lee died during a scene with a prop gun. Brandon passed away shortly before the release of Dragon the Bruce Lee Story, a biopic about his father, which featured a scene where Bruce Lee fought a demon that threatened to harm him and his son. Which of these theories do you think was responsible for Bruce Lee's death? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.